do I have to deliver them now? I always make my deliveries after lunch. Because today you have to make them after breakfast. Now, come on, honey, go. But I don't understand. Shoo. Well, I'll, 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 but come on, I want your story, Susan. Yes, sir, yes. Go on. There's something peculiar going on around yes, here. Yes, and it's none of your business. Hadn't Scotty better hurry? Yes, go on, Scotty, oh. get out of here. What is this? Why is everyone so anxious to get rid of me? Because someone is coming up here. And you don't want me to see him? No, we don't want her to see you. Mercy, no. <laughs> Why not? Well, because... Well, I haven't got time to explain. Who is coming? Inga Kobar. Well, why didn't you say... Who? Inga Kobar, the greatest star the screen ever had. I never even heard of her. Well, of course not. You're too young. She hadn't made a picture for 14 years, and you were six years old then. Seven. Don't you make me younger, and I will make you older. Why did Scotty had better hurry? It's almost time. Yeah, on, what come all the secrecy, just because some has-been is Fine. coming Fine. in. Put these on the wall behind your desk. I want Covar to know that we like her around here. Yeah. Susie, didn't the cleaning woman come in last night? Yes, I assume she did. Why? Well, there's soot all over my radiator. My office is filthy. Now, Mr. Sands, you know your office isn't filthy, and there's soot on the radiator all the time. Well, if there's soot on the radiator all the time, why isn't something done about it? Is he still here? I thought we were going to send him out. Well, he's going. Yes, he's going. Oh. Uh, well, now, uh, what about this suit I've got on? This suit? Well, now, you know you don't have any suit on you. I didn't say suit. I said suit. Do you think it's too light? Should I have worn my navy blue? Yeah, I think the navy blue. Oh, Susie, why do you say things like that? You know I haven't got time to go home and change. Well, I'm sorry. I lost my head. Bye. Will you please? Yeah, bye. Put these things away. Now, Susie, what did Kobar say exactly? Now, she said exactly what I told you before. That she'd read the play, she was interested in the play, mm -hmm. and she was coming up here at 9.30 this morning to talk to you about it. Is that what you told me before? Twenty-seven times. Oh. Scotty, when are you going? Why do I have to go? Because Inga Kobar is a very shy and sensitive person. We have... Uh, bye. <laughs> and we promised her absolute privacy if she comes up here. People frighten her. Well, come on, Come on, Come on, Come on, Oh, yes, yes, come on, yes. International artist, good morning. Yes. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Uh -huh. She's... She's on her way up. Oh. I feel faint. No, no, no. Now, we must all get our heads. Scotty, Scotty, get out of here now. You wouldn't be interested in her anyway. We'll let you stay the next time Margaret O'Brien comes up. Now, come on, honey. Come on. Now, uh, what should we be doing? Well, uh, uh, what do you mean? Am I all right? Should I be standing, sitting? Stand? No, I'm standing. Naturally. Now, we can hardly put her at her ease if we all run around like a bunch of nervous rats. Uh, Susie's right. I know, but I, I feel like a bunch of nervous rats. Uh, I'm going into my office and sit on my desk. Yes. Uh, at my desk. Yes, we'll get you one. Now, let's get here. Yes, perfectly. Yes, perfectly. Yes, perfectly. Yes, perfectly. Yes, perfectly. Yes, perfectly. Yes, Now, uh, uh, honey, just, just relax. <laughs> Sands, please. I'm Inga Kovar. Oh, yes, Miss Kovar. I'm Mr. Sands' secretary. How do you do? <laughs> uh, uh, bye. Would you please tell Mr. Sands Miss Kovar is here? <laughs> bye. Would you please tell Miss <laughs> Mr. Sands, uh, Miss uh, uh, Kobar is here. I forgot the envelope. I got all the way downstairs and didn't even know where I was going. So, you're the great Kobar, huh? Miss <laughs> <laughs> Kobar! Miss Kobar! Oh, Miss Kobar! Miss... <sighs> I can't breathe. Well, up all that... I should wop the daylights right out of you. What did I do? You just scared her right out of here. That's what you did. Just scared her right out of here. Well, gee, I forgot the envelope. What else could I do? I'm sorry. No, never mind. I suppose if it hadn't been you, something else would have scared her. Miss Kovar, this is indeed an honor. Uh, where is she? Scotty, did you... Now, do... I'll tell you all about it. It's a long, sad story, but I think I can throw in a couple of laughs. <laughs> Yes, but couldn't I just... Uh, I understand that, but she was interested. Wouldn't you please let me... Sp uh, hello? Hello? Uh, 
If you won't come to the phone, it's no use. <sighs> that's that. What do you mean, that's that? I mean, that is that. What else could that be but that? But it doesn't have to be that way at all. You're not giving up, are you? Oh, great. Here we go again. <laughs> she won't come to the phone. She doesn't want to come near me. I have as much chance getting into her apartment as I do getting into Fort Knox. She has made it quite clear there's to be no deal. And you blithely tell me that does not have to be that. Well, all I know is that that woman was born to play that part, and that part was written for that woman, and there must be some way of getting those two together. All right, you try it. Oh, do you mean it? Of course not. No, no, Mr. Sanford, let me try. What have you got to lose? You said yourself that there was no deal. Now, I couldn't spoil anything. No, Susie, really. No, now, Mr. Sands. I am a woman. Oh, well, thank you very much for telling me. I never know. No, I mean this thing needs a woman's approach. As a woman, I understand Kovar. Her shyness, her need for privacy, the reason she retired. All right. All right. I'll give you until 6 o'clock tonight. If you don't have a signature on a contract by then, I'll look for another. Another actress or another secretary? Both. Oh, good. Uh, to Kovar's apartment. You'll never get in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've been in Fort Knox, you know. Young man, what is the number of Miss Kovar's apartment? Are you expected? I'm a government worker, Census Bureau. It isn't census time. Of course it isn't census time. I'm from the Rectification Division. Twelve and a half percent of all census reports are erroneous, so I'm assigned to this neighborhood to correct those reports. I'm not allowed to give out Miss Kovar's apartment number. Young man, do you know the penalty for withholding information from the government? If I were to give you Miss Kovar's apartment number, I would lose my job. You could also spend two years in the clink. For your information, the rectification division of the Census Bureau shows no mercy. Well, it's... 9C. That's more like it. And for your cooperation, I'll see that you're invited to the rectification ball this spring. <laughs> Division. So? So there have been some errors reported from this apartment. Is Miss Kobar in? No. She's out. Are you sure? Well, of course I'm sure. I ought to know. I live here. Very well. I'll ask you some questions. But how do I know who you are? How do I know you're from the Census Bureau? Because I told you. <laughs> I think it is better I check. <laughs> All right, you check. Plaza 51955, ask for the rectification division. No, sir. 519. Yeah. It's bet that I take a precaution. Unquestionably. <laughs> International artist, good morning. <laughs> International what? <laughs> This was the Census Bureau. Oh, it's that new girl from the talent agency. She's very slow at catching on. <laughs> I mean, Census Bureau, good morning. Just a moment, please. Rectification department. Oh, uh, uh, hello? Uh, yeah, uh, Census Bureau, the recti uh, re rectification department. Uh, yeah, now, now tell me, did you send a Miss... Uh, Miss, what's... Uh, Cornwallis. Uh, Daisy Cornwallis. <laughs> yeah. Did you send the Miss Daisy Cornwallis to Inga Kofar's apartment? Yes, we most certainly did. She's the best girl we've got. Please see that she gets everything she wants. <laughs> well, I can't answer so many questions. I got a lot of cleaning to do. Very well. What is your name? Maud. Maud. Maud the maid. The maid. 
Now, Maud, when will Miss Kovar be here? Me think the manager, me think the manager, but what will the manager be? What will the manager be? What scripts? You need to use it. Be you need to use it. What will the manager be? Well, I am. What will the manager be? Mademoiselle. Riesle. Senora. Hey, Dave. What are you saying? I was just saying that I don't like snoopy people and I will not answer any of your questions. Now, you go out. Oh, no, I'm not going out. I'm waiting right here for Miss Kovar. Nobody waits here for nobody. Out. Oh, now, just a moment. Out and out. All right. But when you face a firing squad tomorrow, don't say that Daisy Cornwallis didn't warn you. <laughs> Everything rectified? Not quite. Young man, do you know when Miss Colbar will be in? I have no idea. Hello, James. Oh, good afternoon. That voice. Who was that? Oh, that was Maud, Miss Kovar's maid. Oh. <laughs> Maud? I was just upstairs with Maud, the maid. That was probably Miss Kovar. She frequently disguises herself as Maud when strangers come. They do miracles with makeup these days. <laughs> I never get my work done. It's always somebody coming in. Yeah. Police department. <laughs> For hidden sock. Now what? Special Bureau of Investigation. Well, what is it? We're on the trail of a woman who's posing as a member of the Census Bureau. Posing? <laughs> ah. Yeah. I had a feeling there was something wrong with her. It was a, 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 a Daisy Cornwallis. Is that the one? That's the one. Alias Toots Gallagher, alias Mitzi McGillicuddy. She was right here just a few hours ago. I thought so. I knew it. I knew it. She was a fake. <laughs> well, how do I know you're not a fake? Well, <laughs> as a matter of fact, I am, Miss Kovar. My name is Susan McNamara of International Artists, and this is the only way I could think of to get in to talk to you. <laughs> you Casey? Oh, no, Miss Kovar. No, I'm not really. I just wanted to come here and talk to you. No, no, no. I, I'm not Kovar. I, I'm, I'm Maud. Maud, you, you go away now. Oh, no, now, please don't be frightened. I just want to talk to you for one little minute. No, but really, I, I, I warn you, I'm, I'm not Kovar. I'm Maud, me. Oh, now, Miss Kovar, you don't fool me with this disguise. Now, come on, take <laughs> She's mad. She's completely mad. I've got to get the police. Police, somebody come. Oh, I I'm terribly sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. I'll kill that doorman. I'd better go now. Bye. You don't look so good, Miss McNamara. Can I, can I get you some aspirin? The way I feel, even penicillin wouldn't make me look good. I thought I hurt you. Well? I'm not so well. I mean, well, what happened? Oh, plenty happened. Did you get into the apartment? Yes, but that doorman gave me a bum steer. He told me that the maid I talked to was really Koba, and that Koba was the other maid. But he was just trying to throw me off the track, because I found out that more of the maid was really the maid, and the other maid was Koba. So uh, you Susie, see, you'd I... better let Scotty get you some aspirin. I offered. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess it does sound mixed up, but I understand. Well, this can all stop now. It's only 2.30. Oh, Susie, enough is enough. And a bargain is a bargain. You gave me until 6 o'clock. Well, all right. But if you get arrested, don't call me to bail you out. You have my word. <laughs> Scotty, I want you to do something for me. Aspirin? No, no. I want you to go to the public library. There have been a lot of magazine articles lately about Kovar. I want you to ask the librarian to give them to you and bring them here. I think if I study them for some clue... Know your enemy, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on, hurry up. Here's something. She's a vegetarian. Oh, great. Now, if I were a carrot, I'd be in business. <laughs> it says here, she's shy and retiring, and she likes people who are shy and retiring. That means she'd like me. I'm shy and retiring. Well, I'm going to retire when I'm 50. This isn't getting us any place. Well, I wouldn't say that. 
We know that she's a vegetarian, she walks in the rain, she sleeps in pajamas, and she likes people who are shy and retiring. It's more I know about you. And I like it that way. Here's something. Nearly every day at 5 o'clock, Koba takes a hike around the reservoir. I wonder... Uh-huh. I see a bolt of lightning over your head. What struck? Shh. Susie, you've got an idea. Well, I might as well try it. What have I got to lose? What? <laughs> Come on, Susie, let us in on the good news. We are always free enough with the bad news. Ah, oh, come on, Miss McNamara, tell us. <laughs> Susie, where are you going? To the reservoir. To the reservoir? Susie, you mustn't do that. Well, why not? I think a stroll in the park will do me good. And besides, I might contact Kova. But a reservoir? Why, you don't know anything about reservoirs. Suppose Kovar becomes panicky. Suppose she pushed you into the reservoir. <laughs> well, I tell you what, bye. You leave the water taps open and I'll find my way home. <laughs> Did you say something? I wonder if... Could you... I wonder if you would mind... What's the matter? I'm lost. Lost? You are in Central Park. Well, I, I don't mean really lost. I mean... Lost. I'm afraid I do not understand. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to burden you with my troubles. No, no, do not feel that way. Please tell me if I can help you. Oh, you're very kind. I'm lost emotionally. I know where I am, but I don't know where I belong. I, I can't find myself. Ah, oh, now I understand. I understand, little friend. Are you lost too? Yes. I guess I am lost. Too. It's awful, isn't it? Few people know what it is to live in a world of questions with no answers. So painful. Who are you? Do I know you? I feel I have seen you somewhere before. Oh, no, I would have remembered. My name is Susan. What's yours? You may call me Gloria. Gloria Green. Gloria Green? Oh, well, did anyone ever tell you that you look exactly like Inga Kovar? I have heard there is a resemblance. Oh, Inga Kovar. There was a great star. Please, let us not talk about her. She is a thing of the past. Do you remember a picture she did about the French Revolution where she played a countess trying to escape the country with her baby? I don't remember. I have more important things on my mind than old movies. Oh, it was marvelous. There she was, standing at the gate with her baby in her arms, and she says to the guard, Let me pass, or I give you what for. <laughs> no, no. She didn't say anything of the kind. It wasn't like that at all. She was pleading. She was distraught with fear for her child. She went to the guards and said, Please, please let my baby live. He is innocent if you are not his friend. He is too young to be your enemy. Take him for me. Please take him for me. Not for a countess, but for a mother. Well, you certainly did remember, didn't you? Certain things come back to you. 
And beautifully, I might add. Frankly, Miss Green, I don't think Miss Koval could have done that scene any better. Please, let us not talk about Koval. Do you remember when she played the spy? The spy? Yeah, the spy. Uh -huh. and, and she was trying to get the plans for something or other, and, and the hero was making love to her. Ah, I remember. Ah, oh, do that scene. Ah, it was so foolish. No, it was lovely. Now do it. Felix, you tell me you love me. Constantly you say you would do anything for me. Yet, well, I ask you for something so simple as a plans of the munition factory. <laughs> Refuse me. How can I believe you love me when you don't give me the plans? Felix, it is no use to say you will give me anything else. I have everything else. <laughs> no, my heart. It is a plans on nothing. Tonight. No, no, darling. No. Brava! Bravo! Bravo! Please don't applaud. Inga Kovar, I used to dream about meeting you in person. If anyone had told me I'd run into you on this beat, I'd have joined the force sooner. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do, Miss Kovar. I might forget a lot of actresses, but not you. That's what I said. For a long time, I've been hearing that you were going to make a comeback. But nothing ever happened. Uh, let me tell you something, Miss Kovar. You'd make a lot of people happy if he was to make another picture. Uh, and I'm at the head of the list. After me, that is. <laughs> it isn't that simple. Oh, yes, it is, Miss Kovar. That script that Peter Sand sent you is perfect for you. You'd make the greatest hit of your life. You. You are. Now I remember you. I'm Mr. Sand's secretary. You came here and you waited for me. Yes, I did. I was... Uh... You pretended to be a lost soul. You worked on my sympathy. Well, please try to understand. I... It just... was unpardonable. I'm embarrassed. Well, I, I didn't mean to embarrass you. You really... haven't lost anything, Miss Kovar. You just proved that. You're better than ever. Please, please, I don't want to hear any more. Leave me alone. Oh, but Miss Kovar... Miss Kovar... Still not so well. Did you get her? Almost. Almost isn't enough. A miss is as good as a mile. Well, I missed more than a mile. I missed all the way from here to Siam. You said you almost had her. Did you speak to her? Yes. Not only did I speak to her, but she spoke to me. Oh, what'd she say? Well, any number of things, all of which add up to, you better get another actress. Ah, you see, you wouldn't listen to me. You always think that you can bring about miracles. Well, it's time you learn to face reality. And from now on, when I tell you something, will you kindly not refer to me as if I were the village idiot? <laughs> and furthermore, I... I... Oh, little friend, I owe you so much. Me? I know the answer now to my world of questions. It is acting. I have it in my heart, in my blood. When I did those scenes in the park, I knew what was missing from my life. I must act again. I will act again. Well, then you do the picture. I will leave for Hollywood on Wednesday. <laughs> oh, my old dressing room. Will you contact Frida, my hairdresser? Would you please make the necessary arrangements? Hotel, transportation, and so on. I will take my maid with me. Send the contract over, <laughs> and I will sign it. Thank you. Thank you so much, my dear. You, you have brought me back to life. <laughs> Did you hear what she said? I brought her back to life. What was that you were saying about I 
can't perform miracles, Mr. Sands. Mr. Sands. 